questions when it comes to solving exponential equations is that you had exponents on both sides, right? And that became an issue for us because if you tried to log it, it like it didn't work out the way that it would normally would work out for us, and we couldn't do change of base, so we ran into like two problems, right? Our strategy when we got that situation was then to log base 10 both sides. So you would look at this equation and you would log both sides so that it looked like this. Log 3 times 2 to the power of x equals log... 6 to the power of x minus 2. It's called logging both sides. It's kind of like our go-to when you have x's on both sides. The reason that was a benefit to us was because then we could use our exponent rule to take the exponent and put it down in front, right? I think what... That's not the <laughs> I think what Matt said was like drop the exponents. Is that I don't know if that's the terminology that Shab uses. But I would use my exponent law, right? I take the exponent, I put it in the coefficient. That would work here on the right side. That does not work on the left side. The reason it doesn't work on the left side is because this exponent is just for the two. That exponent is not for the three. So you can't do that rule right now. Instead, on the left side, what you have to recognize is that you have multiplication of two arguments, which means I can turn this into two logs adding together. It is now log three and log two x, two to the power of x. Equals, on the right hand side, just so I save myself some uh, writing in the future, I can take that exponent and I can put it in front of the log. X minus 2, log 6. So I did two things there. I dropped one of the exponents, which is good, and I separated that log, so then I can drop that exponent. Okay with that, we kind of see that flow. We're like, yeah, yeah, I got that. Okay, let's drop that exponent. So on the left-hand side, we now have log 3 plus x log 2. On the right-hand side, I need to multiply that, right? So I'm going to expand that right-hand side. The x is going to multiply. The negative 2 is going to multiply. So that I have x log 6 minus 2 log 6. Wait, where did this come from? This 2? Yeah. That came from negative oh, 2 times Yep, yep. I distributed, right? It said the log is on the back side, so it looks a little funny, but I distributed it in to the brackets. Gonna give you a second just to make sure that you're like on track with how we've manipulated this question to get to a point where we can actually solve it. Because that's all we've done right now. Like we've just manipulated these exponential functions so that x is now a linear situation. Feeling all right? All right, now that the x is no longer in the exponent and we've got them out of the brackets, I check my exponent on my x values. My exponent on my x values are 1, meaning these are linear equations. So to solve a linear equation, you have to get all the x's on one side, everything else on the other side. The direction at which you go does not matter. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all the x's to the right side of the equal sign, which means I need to move this, this x log 2. The way you move x log 2 would be by subtracting x log 2 to the other side. At the same time, to save me a little bit of space, I'm going to move anything that doesn't have an x to the left side. So for instance, this minus 2 log 6, I'm going to add it to the other side. So then I've moved that over as well. I'll try to do it a different color so you can see the two different maneuvers I'm doing. So on the left-hand side, these would cancel out. On the right-hand side, those would cancel out, right? Because I'm moving it. It should look like this. Log 3 plus 2 log 6. Equals x log 6. Minus x log 2. I did a lot of movements there. So just like make sure we're on the same page. We're good with where things went. My goal was getting x's to the right. Everything else that doesn't have an x to the left. Sweet. On the right-hand side, I'm caught in this weird limbo, right, where I've got x's attached to logs. Our trick to that yesterday was we were going to GCF and x out. So on that right-hand side, to get that x by itself, I'm going to GCF an x out. That means I have log 3 plus 2 log 6 equals x as my GCF, log 6 minus log 2. And now I'm only one step away from getting x by itself. To get x by itself, I need to move all of this to the other side. It is x times all of this. So to move something that's being multiplied, you would divide it to the other side. So I'm going to divide that entire log binomial. Divide log 6 minus log 2. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. That gives me log, oh, you can do it, computer, log 3 minus 2 log 6 divided by, uh, what was your question? Why is the 2 negative? Uh, it's not. <laughs> not a silly question at all. <laughs> uh, on the bottom, it's log 6 minus log 2 equals x. Honestly, like you might see questions where it's like the answer is going to be in this crazy log form and they might be like, oh, what number is here? What number is here? You know, like, you know those types of questions where you have to know what number is supposed to go there? You'll probably see that. If not, in a numeric response, you can calculate that. Right? So you actually put this into your calculator. It's all log base 10. So you just have to use the log button. If you put it in your calculator, log 3. Wait, you don't plus... have to divide log 3. No, like I can type this. Log 3 plus 2 log 6 in my calculator. Hit enter. And then I would divide by, put a bracket, and then type all that. So you don't have to use the log. No, we don't have to use that change of base trick. 
You should get 4.26. Uh, if it was nearest 10th, 4.3. I heard some of you saying 4.3. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> um, okay, ladies. Cecily actually brings up like a good point, which is like we're at the full page questions point. Um, organization is key to doing math at this level. You have to work vertical and organized. If you run out of space in your vertical way, then go to the next column and start at the top and go vertical again. And it'll keep your work organized. Try your absolute best to avoid going on an angle or going side to side. Because when you do that, it's going to get messy. I look at this. I can tell you every single step because it's organized. If it starts to go down, over, down, <laughs> over, right, which happens, then it gets really, really hard for me to tell what you've done. It's even more hard for you to tell what you've done. So organization is key. Truly, it is key. Yeah. Two. That's two. Yeah, probably two. Probably two. Honestly, it'd probably be a half mark for realizing the log both sides, uh, a half mark for dropping the exponents and using exponent laws, and probably a full mark for mark for solving. That's my guess. Okay. Um, we'll do this one quickly. So the student is attempting to solve the equation. Uh, the student's work is shown below. You have to decide where the error is. Looking at that work, they've already done the first step and they're saying the first step's correct. So like if you're like, that's wrong, and it's not wrong. Like they didn't even give that as an option of what's wrong, right? So like, this is good. They've logged both sides. Wait, after you log both sides, you wanna draw the exponents, right? That's the purpose of logging both sides. When they drop the exponents, it looked like that. There's an issue with how they drop those exponents. What's the issue? They need brackets, yeah. You need brackets. Brackets are saying that you're multiplying that entire exponent by the log. If you don't put brackets, you are saying only the one is times the log, which is not true. Their error was in line A. All right, let's solve logarithmic equations. Oh my goodness. Honestly, probably easier. Um, you're going to run into two different situations. You're going to run into two situations. Situation one, all of your logs are the same base. So if you look at this first question, that's situation one. Logs are the same base. If your logs are the same base, then you can combine those logs to become one log, most likely, right? Looking at that, I can combine these logs because when I'm adding logs, that means I can multiply the arguments. This becomes three times x. Same base, use log laws, right? Make it one log. The reason that's helpful is we can solve single log problems. We've already done it before. If x is part of the log, you need to change to exponential form. 
change into exponential form, base of the log, base of the power. Whatever was on the other side becomes your exponent equals the argument. Get x by itself, divide that 3 to the other side. 9 to the power of 1 divided by 3 is 3. x equals 3. If you can get things to be a single log, solving logs is a breeze. Look at the next one. Same base, yeah? They're both log base 4. Once I identify same base, I'm going to try to use log laws. I can use log laws here. I have adding of logs. That means I can multiply the arguments. And you have that, right? Multiply the arguments. Notice that I left the arguments in brackets because both arguments are binomials. So I have x minus 5 times x minus 2. Awesome. If you have one log and x is part of that log, you need to change to exponential form. Right? I got one log. X is part of the log. That means I need exponential form. 4 is now the base of the power. 1 is now the exponent. And that argument comes over here. It is x minus 5, x minus 2. All right. This one's going to be harder than the last one. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. My problem with this one versus the last one is I have multiplication happening. So to solve x, I have to expand it. That means I need to distribute. When I distribute, you should get on the left-hand side, 4 to the power 1 is still 4. You should get x squared minus 2x minus 5x plus 10. All right, I distributed everything. Can you shut that door for me, please? Thank you. Thank you. Next problem. After we multiplied, what type of equation do we have to solve? It's quadratic. It's quadratic because the exponent is 2. To solve quadratics, you must be in general form. Right. General form means you have to equal 0. So move that 4 over. And I now have 0 equals x squared minus 7x plus 6. Perfect. General form, good. Now you got two choices. Choice number one, factor. Choice number two, quad formula. I do them in that order. Uh, we don't need it here, but when we do need it in a question, I'll show you. I feel like with all the talking, I'm going too slow, so I, like, I'm just going to speed up here. Like, is it that easy for you guys? <laughs> so I factored that using diamond method. It's x minus 6. It's x minus 1. That means the solutions are 6 and 1.
All right, factored it, diamond method, figured out what the x values were that make it equal zero. Good? At which point? Oh, no, not during this. With those guys. I don't know what they're doing, but I... Talking spin class. Hey, stop talking about spin class, because people are trying to focus on math. <laughs> All right. Let's make things harder. Uh, let's solve this log equation. Cool. If this was me, first thing I do when I get that question is I recognize these bases are all the same. Right? Like that's my first recognition. That means I'm going to try log laws if I can. I do have log laws here that I can use. I am adding logs of the same base. If I'm adding logs of the same base, I can multiply those arguments. So I get log 2, x plus 5, x plus 2 equals log 2, x plus 6. Perfect. Next thing I do is we've kind of got like bases. Remember when we were solving exponentials where we had the same base and then we just had to make the exponents equal? That's kind of happening here, but you have the same logs. So if you look at this equation, these two things, the log base two are identical. So if I could just focus on making the arguments the same, then the logs would also be the same and the entire equation would work. So the same way we did like bases with powers, you could do like bases with logs, and these things can cancel each other out. And I now have x plus five times x plus two equals x plus six. So it's like the same kind of concept as, as like base solving. Yep. Yep, you're right. The arguments are different. Um, what I'm saying is that if I could make the arguments equal each other, so if I could solve this, then the logs would equal each other as well. Perfect. Left-hand side. I need to expand that. So x times x, x times 2, 5 times x, 5 times 2. That gives me a quadratic equation. x squared plus 2x plus 5x plus 10 equals x plus 6. Ah. When my computer gets really slow, it starts to connect lines. And then it becomes very hard to read. That is a quadratic equation. Highest exponent is 2. To solve a quadratic, you must go to general form. To get to general form, you need to equal 0. So I'm going to subtract the x and the 6 the other side. So subtract 1x from both sides and subtract 6 from both sides so that you have this quadratic. x squared uh, plus 6x plus 4 equals 0. You have two options. Option number one, factor. You cannot factor that. If you try the diamond method, there's nothing that multiplies to be four and adds to be six. It doesn't work. 
So you have your second option, which is quad formula, which you're just going to have to use. And you don't really have a choice here. Quad formula. I'll write it at the top here. X equals negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. That will be provided to you. Right, so on anything that you do, you'll have that formula. All right, using that formula. Um, before I use that formula, see how I've run out of vertical room? Don't go sideways. All right, like draw a line, start at the top. Work vertical. To use quad formula, in general form, the coefficients are your values. So it goes A, B, and C. So if you were looking at this, this would be A equals 1. This would be B equals 6. This would be C equals 4. Right, like that's general form, A, B, C. So putting this into quad formula, we would have x equals negative b, so negative 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 6 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 4, divided by 2 times 1. I recommend that you don't just throw that into your calculator. You want to simplify it a little bit. So, for instance, like that negative 6, I would now write negative 6. That radicand, so under the root sign, I would calculate that. Uh, 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 should give you a nice number, 20. Right? And then the denominator, 2 times 1 is 2. From there, it depends on the question. If they want a decimal, then calculate it, okay? And you're going to get two answers. You're going to get answer number one is where you add the root and do the calculation. Answer number two will be if you subtract the root and then do the calculation. Most of the time, it will not want a decimal. It will want exact value. That's exact value. Uh, oh, you're close. You can, but not yet. So there's a problem with this answer as exact value. It's the radicals a problem. Root 20 can be simplified. So remember simplifying radicals. You would take a number. I'll do it over here. Root 20. And you would rewrite it as 4 times 5 which means it's root 4 times root 5, which means it's really 2 root 5. Throwback to math 10, simplifying radicals. There's a good chance that you have to simplify radicals in your final answer on test. Right? So you look at the root, you find a perfect square number, so it's a number that you can square root that divides into 20. 4 divides into 20. The result is 5. Then I can split the radicals. Then I can calculate the radical. So it now looks like this. x equals negative 6 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2. And now Amelia's question of, can't you divide everything by two? Yes, you can now, because you have a coefficient in front of this radical. So you can divide all coefficients by two. Divide this by two, this by two, this by two. Your final answer as an exact value would be negative three plus or minus root five. 
you could put that in your calculator if you want to know the decimal values. I'm going to leave it like that. That's an exact value in simplest form. Is that noise the hallway or the next room? Okay, so you're going to solve the nearest hundred. If you're not done, that's okay. Uh, first thing I do is I see they're both log base five. So I'm going to use my log laws. My log law would be to divide those arguments now. So I would have this, x over x minus 2 equals 3. I then would recognize I have one log, and x is part of the log, which means I want to turn this into a power. To turn this into a power, it would be 5 to the power of 3 equals x over x minus 2. Bueno. Going to solve that, I have a fraction, right? I need to get that x off the bottom of the fraction. That's the tricky part for us. So to get that x off the bottom, I need to multiply both sides by x minus 2. Could you change the 5 to the power 125, yeah, for sure. Right? That's the tricky part, is getting that x minus 2 off the denominator. Then you have this situation. You have x minus 2 times 125 equals x. Multiply that 125 into the brackets. You have 125x minus 250 equals x. It's a linear equation, which means get your x's to one side, numbers to the other. That would be 124x equals 250. Uh, x equals 250 divided by 124. You throw that in your calculator. It should be x equals 1.9, maybe 199. Two point zero. Oh, it's just over 2, not under 2. Embarrassing. 2.02? Tricks. Tricks and strategies we used here. Strategy one, I saw the like faces, combined it, right? That's an immediate sign to me to use log log. Strategy number two, x is part of the log, I change it into a power. Strategy number three, getting rid of the fractions, right? To multiply that to the other side is honestly where most people end up getting that question wrong. You do all the log and exponent work, right? And then you just don't know how to deal with that denominator. Okay. Why does it go from the to the Good question. Um, I had to subtract one x to the other side. Oh. Yes. All right. Yeah, no, maybe so. Okay. This one. Um, at which of these points is the relation, blah, 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 not defined? Uh, what if log bases are different? Do I have time to do them all? Yeah, I think so. Okay. When is it not defined? They've given you the answers, right? They're giving you x and y values. They're saying x equals 0, y equals negative 6. They're saying x equals 2, y equals 0. Agreed? Like they're giving you solutions? x equals 5, y equals 4. Anytime they give you answers in a multiple choice test, which actually rarely happens at this level of math, all you really need to do is test your answers. Guess and check. Guess and check. Like legit, guess and check. And that's pretty much what it's saying to do because it's like, when is it not defined? Like, which of these is not going to work? Wait, not defined means not defined. Uh, yeah. Anything that makes it negative. Uh, yeah, and the key is going to be, like, what's the key? Uh, yeah, and the key is going to be when the argument of the log turns negative, it's not going to work. 
So if you look at example, I want to do one that works first. Let's do B. Let's test B. Okay, so we're going to say X equals 2, Y equals 0. We're going to test that. So I go to my equation on the left-hand side. I'm going to change X to be 2 and Y to be 0. That means I now have log 3, 2 plus 1 plus log 3, 2 minus 0. And I changed X's and Y's equals log 3 of 6. On the left-hand side, that gives me log 3 of 3 plus log 3 of 2 equals log 3 of 6. You could honestly put that in your calculator. The decimals will be the same. Or you could do your log law. On the left-hand side, if you're adding logs, you multiply. And I get log base 3 of 6 equals log base 3 of 6. Meaning that that worked. All right, it worked. When I put x and y in, both sides of the equal sign did equal each other. I used log laws here. 3 times 2 means This test one that doesn't work, um, where it's not defined and it actually is not going to work out at all for us, would be D. Let's test D. Let's test that. That's X equals negative 4, Y equals negative 2. If you test that, you're going to get log 3, negative 4, plus 1, plus log 3, uh, negative 4, minus negative 2. And that's supposed to equal log 3 of 6. Good. As we simplify this, we're going to get log 3 of negative 3. And we're going to get log 3 of negative 2. And then we're going to use our log laws to multiply those together. And sure enough, it works. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Algebraically, that worked. You used to run into this problem in Math 20-1. You'd run into problems where you solved it. Algebraically, it's clean. You're like, yeah, okay, that worked but it actually doesn't work. In Math 20 one what would happen was you had NPVs. Remember, you'd be dividing by zero and you'd get an answer and then you'd check and you'd be like, oh crap, that's an NPV, it doesn't work. So even though it's a good answer, we can't use it because it creates a situation that's impossible to actually calculate. That's happened here. So the solution worked. Algebraically, that is clean. I've done nothing wrong, it works. The problem is right here and here. You cannot have a negative argument. The log of a 3 is the base. What exponent on 3 would turn it into negative 3? That's impossible. I can't have a positive base turn into a negative thing. It's not possible. Uh, we did these calculations, I think, on like 1.2 or something like that. We talked about this negative arguments with positive bases, and it's just not possible. Essentially, what you're saying to yourself 
is there's an exponent you could put on that to be negative three. And like, that's not possible. There's nothing you could put in that spot to make it work. This means, this whole concept of not defined, means you need to test your answers. So from here forward, when you solve a log question, you should test to make sure that that actually works and that you're not breaking a math rule. Last year, you would test, am I dividing by zero? This year, you're going to test, am I creating a log that's actually undefined? That's not possible. This is not possible. Therefore, it is not defined. D is the correct answer. Uh, A would not turn negative. I actually almost tested A because I thought the same thing. You would have minus negative 6, which would turn positive. Yeah, right here, right? That's plus 1. Not plus one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I almost tested A too because it's like, oh yeah, negative Y. It's got to be that one. <laughs> we okay with that idea of like undefined? You're like, yeah, yeah, that's not good. How many people remember NPVs from last year at all? You're like, yeah, that's a concept. No, people are like not at all. Uh, we would call them extraneous roots too. Sometimes we'd solve things and say it's extraneous, like it algebraically worked, but it was wrong. That ring a bell? Yeah, some people, yeah, some people know. Math 20 was a long time ago. <laughs> Not that long ago. <laughs> some people are like, I did it last semester. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not that long. Okay, last one. We made it. We only have to do one of them, too. We'll try to do both. But we really don't have to. Oh, we got loads of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got loads of time. Good, good, good. We've been cruising today. Uh, solve algebraically to the nearest tenth. What's the problem with this question? Like, if you look at it right now, they're not like bases. Yeah, they're not like bases. Like, that's a massive problem for us. Like, as soon as I look at that, that's scary because now it's like, what do I do? I cannot do log laws. Okay, make that very clear. I can't use. Log laws here on different bases. I guarantee you that there would be an answer there for if you did combine those logs. Like that would be one of the, the trick answers. You can't combine those. Okay, so what do we do? If you have that situation, you need to change them so they are the same base. It's our change of base formula. It's how we calculate things without the fancy calculators. Right? Take each log, and you're going to change a base it. When you change a base it, you take this guy, for instance. I don't like red. Blue. And I'm going to rewrite it like this. Log base 10 of x. Log base 10 of 5. That's how we put it in our calculator to calculate it, right? So we know that's mathematically true. It is called your change of base formula. It will be on a formula sheet for you as well. Essentially what you're saying is you could take a log and you could split it, argument on top, base on the bottom, and they both become base 10. We're going to do that with both of our logs here. So we're going to do it to this one too. Oh, it's already log base 10. Beautiful. That makes our life easier. You can just leave it as log x. Good save. I'm sure I would have seen that, right? <laughs> Um, if it was a different base, like the next question, then you could split it. Since it's already base 10, you might as well just leave it. Then okay? 
Bueno. Bueno. Okay. Now, I have log x and log x. I'm going to do the same trick that I did before when I had like x log plus x log. I'm going to GCF something out. I'm going to GCF the log x out. So it looks like this. Log x comes out front. I'm going to write that in orange over here. I'm GCFing. So log x comes out front. What's left over would be 1 divided by log 5 plus 1 equals 4. I GCF'd the log x. So it's Um, what do you mean? Like since it's addition. Oh, yeah, since it's addition, you can multiply it addition. Yeah, but you can. Uh... I'm going to look into that more, though, and see if I can do that. Um, I now have X kind of off to its side. Just like we did in the other stuff, we're going to divide this whole binomial to the other side. So divide 1 over log 5 plus 1. So you have this. Log x equals that entire mess. Because this question says to the nearest tenth. And you'll notice that these questions almost always will say to the nearest tenth with these different bases. I'm actually just going to calculate that to make our lives easier. So I'm going to round, I'm not, I'm going to round to like the nearest, I don't know, five or six decimal places because it's not my final answer yet. So I don't want to round it to the nearest tenth or else I'm going to end up double rounding. So you have to do the yeah, so like, actually, I'll put this in my calculator up here so you can see what I'm doing. So to calculate that, there we go. Um, I would do it like this. I go 4 divided by. Then I'm going to put a bracket. That bracket will represent the entire denominator. Then I'll put a bracket to represent the fraction of 1 divided by log 4. So I got double bracket there. 1 divided by log 4. Close that bracket. Close that bracket. Is it, so, oh, is it 5? 5? Yeah. Okay. So these brackets. This first one is because I need a bracket for the entire denominator. This one is for the fraction 1 over log 5. Yeah, the then, not yet. <laughs> then this is closing the log. This is closing the fraction. And then you're going to put plus one and close that bracket. That gives you that decimal. 1.64563236. I honestly, truly, if that was me on a test, I'd use that whole decimal. That, like that's the paranoid side of me is I wouldn't want to accidentally double round myself. So I would use that whole value. 1.64563236. And what you've created is now a situation where I can change this to a power and solve it. All right, I've got one log, x is inside that one log. I can change this to a power. The base is 10, so 10 to the power of that crazy decimal, 1.64. Oh, I don't know if my computer's gonna make it. So 10 to the power of 1.64563236.
Those are all the wrong numbers. Six, four, five, six, three, two, three, six. There we go. You should get 44.2 as your answer. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's going to let me. I'll try, but. Oh, there we go. I got it. Forty four point two. Um, I th I think just the bigger the file of video, the more it's bogging down. So the longer I record, the more it gets slowed down. We okay? That's really hard. Yes, sir. How do we go from log How do I go from here to here? Yeah. So this is base 10, right? Yeah. So I changed it to exponential form. Okay. Base of the power, this switched over, argument switched over. Yes, that's good. How did we get in, like, earlier on the question, how did we get from... Like, how did we factor 1 over log bracket, like, 1 over log 5 plus 1? Right here? Yeah, I don't know. That is not what it is for me. Yeah, that's fair. That is a really weird-looking GCF, uh, which is legit, right? So what I did was I took a greatest common factor of log X out. I'm going to highlight it in orange here. Okay, this is my GCF. A GCF means I divided each term by that thing. This divided by log of x becomes 1. That's the easier one. It's kind of like, yeah, okay. This is the messed up one. If you divide that by log x, Log x divided by log x is 1. The denominator is still divided by log 5. That's why it became 1 over log 5. So you only divide the denominator? Yeah, you're dividing the entire fraction. Um, it's just when you divide a fraction, you're dividing the numerator, right? So if I give something like this, like 5 over 3, if I divided that by 5, Right, like dividing goes to the numerator, it wouldn't go to the denominator. That would become one over three. I don't think you've seen that in probably at least two years. And even if we showed you something like that in grade 10, doubtful, right? Like that's pretty weird to GCF a fraction like that. Okay.